255 here. What up? What up? So today we're going to be talking about Armor Core storyline just a little bit. And then we're going to look at some old Armor Core PlayStation 5 gameplay to see what type of game it is. If you're like myself, I played the original Armor Core on PlayStation and I liked it, but it wasn't my favorite experience. It was difficult back then. I only played the demo. But I did like the design of the game and the ideas behind it. So we're also going to look at some Metacritic scores and reviews on the old game. And kind of get an idea. If, if you're like me, it's your first time playing the series for a really long time. Like I've done the original PlayStation 1. Or if it's just your first time getting into it, this video should be helpful for you. All right, let's get started. So the story overview is that a mysterious new substance was discovered on the remote planet Rumacon 3. As an energy source, the substance was expected to dramatically advance humanity's technological and communication capabilities. Instead, the substance caused a catastrophic Instead, this substance caused a catastrophe that engulfed the planet and the surrounding stars and flames and storms, forming a burning star system. The same substance, so then almost a half a century later, the same substance resurfaced on Rubicon 3, a planet now contaminated and sealed off by the catastrophe. Extraterrestrial corporations and resistance groups fights over control of the substance. A struggle over the substance. The player infiltrates Rubicon as an independent mercenary and finds himself in a struggle over the substance with the corporations and other factions. I find mech anime games, because I've played other ones, stories typically tend to be what it is, right? And they're pretty good. It's war, you're fighting, there's usually some secret betrayal some enemy doing something clandestine to destroy the world universe whatever it is at this time but usually their storylines are okay and we're going to find out more when we check out those medic critic reviews <clears throat> so now let's next look at the the gameplay so this version that i picked is from the ps3 this is Armor Cord 5. So looking at the screen right now, he's just walking around. I like the way the mobility looks. I can get into this. The only thing I'm worried about because I have maybe crazy memories and I was a child at that time was Armor Cord was hard before. And when I pay lots of money for expensive games, $60 or $70, whatever the case it is, I need it to be accessible because I want to have fun. That's why I'm buying these type of games. When I want to do hard things, I do fighting games. The combat looks good. I hope they have an automatic targeting system so that we can easily do that. For those who want the hard mode and the one to do all that, I, I'm pretty sure that's available. Looking at other videos, like before each mission, at least in part five, they have like a map where you're supposed to go and your, your destinations. Another thing that turns it off about games sometimes, maybe some of you can relate, or I'm just trying to have fun and relax. There's nothing worse than spending 10 or 15 minutes searching a map because you don't know where to go next. That absolutely ruins the gaming experience. For some other people, it may be that they don't want the arrow telling them to go this way or go that way, and they want to discover. I like more of a balanced system where it's if you want to discover, you can discover on your own, but if you need help finding the location, you can find it. And I like these type of stories where there's like people just chiming in while you're in your mech and they're talking to you through your radio. That's that's always entertaining for me. And that's one thing I'm not like I said, something I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna be excited about this target feature. So they have to have auto targeting. But I'm imagining that since this game was worth software buying a spot. At the Game Awards, they must plan on making this game accessible to a larger audience than just a hardcore fan base. And when you're not just trying to target a hardcore fan base, you're going to make sure that, you know, things are accessible. So, so far, it looks good. The way it's designed, 
basing it on the previous version. Let's look at some Metacritic reviews. So we have four random Metacritic uh, reviews here that I picked. One will give it a seven, one give it a six, one give it a nine, and one give it an eight. Let's check it out. So this first one is Meta Tessin. This game, short and simple, is for multiplayer. Yep, usually there are branching paths, ways, in the story, and usually you can expect 25 plus missions. So what does 5 have? An absolute abysmal 10 story missions. Also, the chatter is so incoherent. There was a story, but like any of the armored cores or even the demon or dark soul story, you have to dig in and read the lines more so than than it being presented to you in cutscenes. Just how software rolls. But here it feels rushed as it had barely any development than end. Seems like their main focus is online. There are 80 order missions, but they are very boring and repetitive. Only good to farm money for online. The bosses, whether online or offline, are not very impressive and just a big target. Four had bigger and better super bosses. Also, the mecha are smaller this time round, i.e. half the size as the next and four, and not as movable and agile as the core three and four games. This game is more reminiscent to the Armor Core 1 and 2 and their expansions, so if you are used to bigger, destructive, and fast speed mechs, you might be turned off of the initial slow feeling. The big difference is the invisible ceiling in this game is very low, so building flying mechs takes a little more tinkering than normal as most of the parts are optimized for ground combat. But that is the funniest part, and Armor Core 5 holds the series customization really high. In this game, they have kind of a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing going on with kinetic chemical and laser fire, and all the weaknesses and immunities associated with set builds seems like a nice balance which they had to do to make the online work. So he's got a lot more there, but just basing on that, that does not sound like something I want to deal like deal with. I mean, I don't think story has to be too great, but I don't know what an armor core story is like, so we got to go with what they're saying. So this first review doesn't sound that great. Let's look at this next one. This is from Retro Roos. This review is from someone new to the armor core series. This game has some very strong points, but it also has some very weak points. The customization in this game is awesome. You're presented with so many different options. It can literally customize any part of your mech. It's great. Combat is also very cool because you can create so many different kinds of mechs. You'll encounter many diverse kinds of mechs in combat. One bad part about this game, it's story. It's near incomprehensible. I have no idea what the hell is going on in regards to the storyline. I think I'm a terrorist, but I'm not really sure. Anyway, if you're into mechs and customization, buy this game. If you need a game with a good story, don't buy this game. So that's two reviews that has stated clearly that this game is not good story-wise. Uh, I like fighting in a mech. I don't like building a mech. And I'm hoping that that's going to be simple and that it's not going to have some situation in part six. Because, again, this is being presented at the Game Awards. They're looking for a large audience. High skill, really hard ceilings. I guess it is soft uh, where so maybe the targeting fans of the Dark Souls series, really hard games. But um, I don't know. For me right now, it's not looking favorable. Okay, now that last viewer who said all those positive things... And then said the one thing about the story, gave it a 6. And the really long one I read before that gave it a 7. This next person gives it a 9. Good game, but hard for beginners. There it is again. But it shouldn't be too hard since if you join with some team, other team members will also help you. This game will force you to go online. And each time you play, this game will force you to go online each time you play. But you can still but you still can play it offline, but it won't be twice the fun by playing with your friend. The control are quite enjoyable. Now since the movement is not booster oriented, even though the maneuver is a little bit hard, but if you know the trick, it won't be really hard. The shop menu is overflowing with information that might confuse newcomers. We also can sell our own parts to other player. The multiplayer co-op and match is fun regardless of the graphic. This game is fun to play with friends. See, my problem with this is um, 
when I play a game, for me personally, like Armored Core, I'm looking for single player stuff. I'm not looking for a lot of online things. I already have MMOs for that. I already have fighting games for that. I just want to play an action and adventure. And so, unless they dramatically change six and do a really good job with that single player content, this game may not be for me. All right, the last reviewer we do here is Oblivion Doll, who gave it an eight. There are two reasons this game is short of a 10 out of 10 rating for me. And each is major enough to cut a full point away. One is the separation of North America and European servers. The other is the game's lack of mass appeal. It's very clear this product is targeting a specific niche. And while it offers that target market on almost everything, it's not even remotely fun for most players outside that core group. Another thing I was worried about. I live in New Zealand, and our local copies of the game connected to the European servers. <laughs> I'm literally on the opposite side of the world from almost everyone I faced. While there has been visible lag in a handful of matches, literally four or five of the dozens of online matches I played, it's never been severe enough to actually influence a battle. I've seen incredibly fast moving target teleport almost the width of their mech in a worst case scenario so far, which means literally nothing in the context of even the most precision sensitive weapon. So the online is good. As for the gameplay itself, the full freedom to reassign every function in the game to a different part of the controller means that you can create your own control scheme exactly the way you want. Previous games in this series allow players to fly as long as their AC energy reserve held out with the most recent releases, AC4, Armored Core 4, and for answer, making permaflight builds a common site. Those two games also made lightweight ACs. Those two games also made lightweight ACs significantly more durable than previous titles, where you had to sacrifice armor even more than firepower to get the fastest mechs. In this and some other aspects, Armor Core 5 is a return to the rule of the series, a good lightweight. AC pilot can run rings around a less skilled pilot with a heavy AC, but if you make a mistake, you go down fast and hard. Likewise, a good pilot with a heavy Armor Core will bring a lot of firepower against even the fastest moving targets, but if they can stay out of the line of fire, it doesn't matter how big your guns are. As every fan knows, customization is the most important aspect of the series, and this game has done it justice. There are multi-types of arms, leg, core, and head, along with generators, booters, and FCS. I'm not, I don't really care about that. And so, that, you know, right now, I'm going to say basically this interview's not for me, but if you like building mechs, and you like, hopefully they'll fix the storyline. If they fix the storyline, and customization is easy... And you don't really mess it up, I'll buy the game. But right now, I'm still sitting on the fence. I hoped all this information has helped you. I'll leave a link in the description for all of these ones. And again, this is just based on five. It's just me trying to get an idea of how people have seen other games to kind of form some type of opinion about six. But six can be completely different. And if it is, and it's better, and it's jam-packed with single-player uh, contact, I'll buy it. 255, out. One.